some more championship pocket billiards, this time the discipline of straight pool at the four. I'm Grady Matthews, along with Pat Fleming. Pat, why don't you tell our listeners what's coming up? Well, Grady, uh, as you know, uh, this was a round-robin format. We were playing straight pool and nine ball, and uh, we were selected to play straight pool this round. And uh, it's 150 points. And, of course, we lagged, and as usual, you win the lag. No, I lost the lag, and you're having oh, me break. <laughs> I'm thinking nine ball. <laughs> uh, we're in Cleveland at the 1993 yes. Snapple Invitational All-Around Challenge 2. It's got nine ball and straight pool, and we're in Swingo's Theatrical Restaurant. And it, it is, to my knowledge, the only pool tournament ever held in such a facility. Incidentally, Grady, the uh, for the viewers, they don't have to adjust any TV settings. This uh, the ambient sound for the first 45 minutes is not there, so we won't hear the clicking of the balls. After about 45 minutes, uh, we discovered that, and so they'll be hearing the uh, the balls. Okay. Okay, and of course uh, you're breaking the balls. Well, you and I both love straight pool anyway. I think it's a, a wonderful game. I didn't break them all that well here. If I hadn't gotten the nine out in the open like that, it would have been all right. But, of course, the first shot's tough to make. And it's a pleasure to see you out playing with all the guys again. For well, any of you that might not know it, Pat Fleming's a, a terrific pool player and especially a straight pool practitioner. Well, I recall uh, actually just trying to cinch this shot because I didn't... Uh you know, I was afraid I'd miss it. <laughs> so well, I just this tried to make it. the easiest shot here. And certainly I did miss it. With no assurance of, of having another shot either. And our viewers should also notice we have an angle that we use now just for straight pull in one pocket where we show the bottom half of the table so we can see the angles better. Well, I had a nice angle on this nine ball. Now I want to get into the stack a second time, so I'm just going to draw this back. Got a little straighter in than I wanted mm -hmm. to. Now I like hitting this with a little right English and some draw. I can't afford to go forward. I just want to come back to the rail and have it spin out towards the middle of the table. You're saying right English with draw? Yeah. And this is a good one-pocket shot, too, position-wise. Now it should spin up a little. Now I don't... I think I play position on the 8 or the 7 here. Yeah, the 8 ball. Now I'm in pretty good shape here. I can break the balls up and shouldn't be any two balls frozen after this. Now that's ideal. I think I ended up having to shoot the 11 ball here. Why don't we fill our viewers in on who's leading the tournament? This is a round robin, double round robin, actually. Mike Zugland at 5-1 and one is presently in the lead with a surprise tie for second place in the form of Rich Lesky, a local player. And Lou Viterra is also 4-2. and two. Are you concerned about those four balls that are tied up somewhat? Well, I meant to get here where I could hit those two balls in the area of the spot. That's really all I wanted. Now, this shouldn't be too big of a problem. Now, being a one-pocket player, I like to get over on the left side of the, those balls and play them in the same pocket or the lower right-hand pocket. But I need to move the... 11 ball here, too, I think, which is what I play position for. And I'm not real happy with the angle I got here. I think I go up and play position for the one ball next. <clears throat> See, the six goes here. And for anybody that's interested in playing good straight pool, when you have balls that go, there's no reason to hit them or break them up. I'm a little straight in on this, so I'm, I'm just going to... Oh, I, all right, I came all the way out there. I didn't hit that very well. I'm lucky to end up this well. Of course, it's a new cloth, and the cue ball is going to come long, but 
but I sure didn't mean to come out that far. As it happens, I get a nice angle on this 13 ball. Oh, I don't remember you missing that. Oh, well, nice. I do. I thought I made it, but I didn't. All right, so you're leading the match 10 and nothing right now and left me uh, kind of in an ideal spot to clear up what I considered a problem. I the guess I'm pessimistic. Balls. If you can make the six there, which I think you can. I know, I don't think I could have. It, or it was too questionable, I think. Well, let's see what you do here. I think you're going to play position on the six here. No, I don't. In fact, uh, I'm so worried about the six going and disturbing that other ball, I decide to go up top first. Okay. And worry about it next. Put a little low inside. Which is one of your better shots. I always like the way you hit that. You got a little straighter in here than you yes, wanted indeed. to. Yes, indeed. And uh, following is going to put me on the wrong side of the table, so I'm going to try and draw th three or four rails and get behind that six. I know I'd have lots of problems, but... I remember I can barely see this uh, six in the uh, top right-hand corner. And yeah, I remember you shooting this, and I, it was I questionable fan. whether you could make it. Yeah, I fanned the other ball, in fact, but uh, it kept on line in the cue ball, kept enough spin to get out. Oh, that's a nice shot. Nice shot. Now, unlike a lot of the straight pool players, you never have minded an angle like this. Uh, actually, I prefer angle. Right. If I don't have angle, I feel I'm out of line. Now, is that right? <laughs> Although I wish uh, that I had less of an angle here, but uh, just two or three inches, though. Two or three inches to the right uh, would have been better. Well, there certainly are contrasting styles when it comes to playing straight pool. Now, you're just going to hit this with a good high ball. That's right. I just want to cinch the ball because I know that top spin is going to uh, back off slightly and then, uh, and then go forward again. But once again, I'm missing that same pocket. And later on, uh, it starts to worry me when I shoot in that pocket, even though it was my own fault. I missed it pretty good. Boy, that can dwell on your mind. I remember you making a comment that you that you had missed two in that pocket. Now, I've always believed, even though I can't do it all the time, that the good players are supposed to run a lot of balls when they get to start off like this. <laughs> I mean, these balls are in perfect position. There's you can't get them much spread out anymore, right? Well, if Pat Fleming misses a break shot, you're going to have a shot. <laughs> They're not going to be stuck together. Now, one thing I've been working on all of my life, being a right-handed player, I would much rather have that ball right above the 12 ball I'm preparing to shoot here for the break ball because I can reach it from almost any place. I learned something from uh, Balsas, which has helped me a lot with my straight pool, too. When there's more than one ball up past the side pocket at the other end of the table, it's all right to leave them there sometimes. If there's one, go ahead and get rid of it. And it makes sense because if you've only got one and you get a little bit out of line, you've got problems, right? That's right. Now, Lassiter, even though he wasn't the... Uh, oh, the he wasn't a really finesse-style straight pool player. He used key balls a lot of times up at the other end of the table. Now, when balls are spread like this, uh, there's a hundred different ways of running them. So we can have a yeah, hundred no, different top players play, and they'll all play it different. Sure, different, sure. sure. Well, I wanted to get rid of this six. Now, I meant to nudge a nine here, and I don't hit it, but I'm all right either way. And you're right, there are many different ways of playing it. Um, now, I, I get out of line here, Pat. I had intended to use a seven ball for a key ball because if I can lay the cue ball on the end rail any place, I'm fine. Right. Now, I go right up here like this, and I wanted to play the 13, the 3, and then the 7. 
But as I say, I, I got out of line. And I have to make a hard shot here. I don't like this shot. I certainly don't want the nine for a key ball. Or is, it, is that the nine or the 13? Yeah, the nine, I think. All right. Yeah. And I can't shoot the, the five first because that makes me have to use a nine for a key ball. So I, actually, I make a pretty good shot there. Um, and I end up having to use a nine for a key ball, but I really didn't have any choice. This is slightly more angle, but only about an inch than what I would have liked. I just want to lag this down the rail. And now, this is ideal. Shot. i got a perfect angle. Now, unlike a lot of the straight pool players that you see, I like, if I'm playing good straight pool, I like to use all high ball break shots if I can. I detest drawing it. I get in a lot of trouble drawing it. Oh, yeah. Because if you go forward... You can scratch, uh, you can end up with balls on the end rail where you don't have a shot. And if you draw it, you can go all the way to the other end of the table. Well, my rule of thumb, with, with exceptions, of course, is that when I have the angle, when the cue ball is closer to the side rail than the object ball, as you have it, I always use follow. If it's the opposite, I'll probably use draw. Mm -hmm. But that's perfect. It yeah. broke out pretty well here. Okay, now when you when you break up a rack, and of course it's not completely broken up, you have to break up other uh, portions of it. You're obviously planning now of what balls you'll have to use, or sure, well, I consider getting into the rack the second time to be of the utmost importance. And I didn't hit this hard enough. I had planned to come up and play the 14 next because it goes, and I think I do end up playing the 14, and I want to draw off of the eight ball. And if I can hit that 3-1, that's perfect for me. And I don't want to shoot this very hard. That, that's just exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm a little fortunate here that I can see the 3 because I almost got in trouble. Now I'm in, in pretty good shape, although there's still some work to be done with this rack. I don't remember exactly what I did here next. Do you use the same cue in nine ball as straight pull? Yes. And this is a black bore cue. I love this cue. They've yeah. made a physical change uh, from the standard steel joint. They've, they've lightened that, and it only weighs about a third of what the old uh, joint? steel joint weighed. And it affects the balance point, and all, right. all sorts of physical improvements. And I'm in pretty good shape here, except that I don't have a good break ball. So I, I wanted to get where I could move the six out here, or I could just um, nudge it, nudge it out there. Well, I got the five and eight for protection here, and I got it out there pretty well. Now, I looked at this a couple of times. I remember this because I wasn't crazy with where I, where I ended up here. The five was a tougher angle than what it looks like on the monitor. That's missable. I'm, I'm right over a ball. This was a little bit off angle. And so was that 15 ball. or what? I think it's a 15 ball. But anyway, I, I, I ended up uh, deciding not to shoot the five, I think. I, don't, I didn't like that shot. It's amazing. In nine ball, any one of these shots would be a hanger. Sure. sure. <laughs> In straight ball, everything seems harder if it's off angle. Well, this is the most makeable shot. The highest percentage make. Now I'm in pretty good shape. I could even nudge that other ball out if I wanted to. That's what I decided to do. Seven ball, your key ball, I assume. I, I don't recall, but. Yeah, this, uh, I don't. Well, I want to get rid of this one next, and I think I ended up with an angle where I couldn't get on the one comfortably. I think I have to come out. Now I got, I got a bad angle here for the one. You might but, use the eight as a break now. Well, I, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I would rather be on that side of the table. But I think, I, if I remember right, I decided to shoot the seven here because I don't have a good angle on the one. 
I hit it a little roughly. Now here I just want to be out in the middle of the table. I don't like trying to get straight in on the eight and the side. I'd much rather be out in the middle of the table anywhere. I didn't even get a very good angle. I but I, so you're going to use the eight. I'm going to use the eight, sure. Again, I just want to bounce out in the middle of the table, kind of. That's fine. And you're 38 to 4 right now. There's Steve Miserac and uh, J.R. Gay. J.R. Gay's playing pretty well. He, uh, he's got a 4 and 2 record right now, tied for second. He sure does. He sure does. Well, now I have one of those angles. I make the the right. break shot. Mm -hmm. But Where's I your cue ball? it's oh. up the other end of the table. <laughs> I let you scratch. I didn't know it. Well, I'm so scared of going forward on that shot. I mean, given a, uh, a choice of the lesser of two evils, I'd rather be here where I could, at least mm -hmm. I'm shooting. Now, that was kind of a sense shot. All I want to do is sense it. And I used a little low right English. Now, I do this, and I learned this from uh, from Rempy, and it's very valuable. I move the one so that the two goes in the side. Now, if I happen to end up in such a way that I have to use a two for a protection ball, the one's gone. I don't have to worry about playing a combination or something. That, that was my only reason for shooting the one there. Now I'm in pretty good shape. I just have to be careful with the cue ball here. I think I draw this right into those balls, right? Now I don't have a break ball here yet. So I've still got a little work to do. I think I can make the seven here, but I decide not to not to shoot it. Now, I don't remember what I did here. I think I'm going to shoot that stripe ball just to the left of the spot. No, I'm not. What am I shooting at here? I can't. Oh, okay, that ball went. Now, I can make the seven, and that's what I'm going to, going to shoot. Now I've got an angle where I should be able to nudge one of these two balls, but the one on the right is a preferable one to nudge. It's a, it's a better angle. Right. More natural. Right, and you're you're not in trouble even if you don't hit it properly. If you hit it well, then you're, you've accomplished uh, two things. you got a nice break shot and, of course, great position, too. Well, I've got plenty of protection balls here, right. too. There it is. Perfect. And i got a nice key ball to get on it with, too. Now, uh, given a choice, the 14 ball is the best ball to get on the two ball with because I can get straight in anywhere and just stop. Right. And that's why I try to come up far enough to uh, shoot this other ball. Now I think I have an angle to go down to the end rail and back up one rail. But I didn't get straight in, so i got to go over to the side rail below the right-hand side pocket with a little low left English. All and right. did you get straight? This is ideal here. Okay. 52 to 4. And that's a 42 ball run for you, Grady. Now this angle I don't mind so much. Um, the object ball is a little closer to the stack and I can control the thickness of the hit and, and, and gauge a lot better how the cue ball is going to come off the rack. So you would not use follow on this one, or are you? No, I'm not. I don't think so. Right. At this angle, I'd be afraid of using follow. No, I know I'm not going to follow this. But this one, I'm not going to end up on the end rail. I shouldn't. Right. Like that's all I want to do is bounce off a few inches off the stack. Now that's ideal for me. I'm real happy when I can break them like that. I think good players are supposed to be able to run balls. Huh. 
I look at it as I'm in trouble. <laughs> because they're not more spread open. <laughs> oh, man. Look, I just got the five ball. <laughs> yeah. What I'm looking at there is uh, just rolling forward and shooting the seven ball, but I want to make sure I don't go too far down the table. That's okay. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And that 15 ball will help your cue ball go into the stack. Sure. And again, I don't want to blast this. I'm happy with that. I didn't have an angle to hit them real, real solidly. And I've done a lot of work on this shot over the years, too. You want to draw this. Well, no, I didn't have the right angle. For that. Um, but notice, I'm just mixing them up three or four inches at a time. But uh, when everything's said and done, maybe that's not best because, I, again, I have work to do here. I've got to shoot the eight ball. One of the things I learned from Miserac that's helped me a lot, when, when you have a few balls open, if you possibly can, play position on more than one of them. That way, if you get out of line, you're, you, you've still got a shot. I didn't get very good here. I ended up having to shoot the two ball here. Uh, but I kill this ball real nicely. Yeah, a lot inside. A lot inside, but this was a, a tougher angle than it looked like. See, I cut that pretty thin. Right. Now I'm in real good shape. I'm not going to worry about removing a break ball here because uh, I should have another one anyway. Now, this hasn't been the easiest rack in the world. I think the right shot here is to go two rails and play position for the six in the lower right-hand corner. And of course, I'd like to get an angle to go into the 13. Well, I'm looking at that, but if I do that, um, I have a lot tougher way to go. And I don't want to go into the back of the balls here. I don't like to go into the back of them if I don't have to. Now, uh, I think I got a perfect angle. I mean, we'll see in a minute. It looks a little straightish from here, but... Yeah, I couldn't hit them. I had to roll forward here. Well, now you will have to go into the back. Now I'm going to have to go into the back of them. But I'm not going to do it very hard. And I think that's one of the big keys to, to a good straight pull. All I want to do is just mix these up a little bit. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's pretty sight when that happens. Yes, yes. Well, a lot Unless of... you're in the chair. It's not a pretty sight. No, but I, I'm worried about you. I've always been in love with your straight pool game anyway, and I know that if I miss or don't run quite a few balls that I could be in trouble. And we're not going to tell our viewers what happens, so that may ultimately be the case. And once again, another fine break shot. And you have 66 to 4 with a 56 ball run. Yeah, I'm in pretty good shape. This is an ideal break shot. Okay, this looks like uh, follow. Yeah, but I yeah. use a little inside on this if I see, if I remember this angle correctly. Uh, unlike a lot of the guys, I like to hit the top of the rack, go over to the side rail, and then the inside English. Let's see if I got the. Well, you're going into the side of the stack. Yeah, looks right. like I am. No, I'm going to. A little draw. Yeah, just a yeah. little bit. I don't have the angle wow. I want. That's scary. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you hit those balls. What? I didn't do anything special there. No, what's scary was you hit them so easily. Oh, you don't like to hit them that easily. <laughs> no, I like to hit them the way you just hit them now. But uh, the way I hit break shots does have its drawbacks at times. But uh, well, when I you get in the rhythm of, of making those kind of severe angle break shots at, at warp speed, that's a hard style of play to defeat. I didn't mean Oops. to hit that ball. I remember that. But I'm still fine Yeah, here. you're in real good shape. You can make mistakes here and still survive. Sure. Well, I prefer the one ball here. I don't remember what I ended up 
using for a brake ball, but the one is, is my favorite. Or, yeah, it's even better now. It's even a little better now. Right. And the 10 is a nice key ball to get on it with. Now here again from one pocket, I, I just follow this down and plan to play the ball that's on the end rail. It just seems like the easiest way to to get out of this. It's hard to mess that up. Mm -hmm. So you're just cleaning up the mess here and uh, to get on your key ball and your brake shot, everything's spread out. Well, so I don't do it. like I hear a lot of good players talk about. I don't play zone or area uh, clearances. I'm not looking to clear all the balls out of a particular area. I just want to play good position and not run into balls. And I really believe, though, playing good straight pool that that a, a player should be able to, when the balls are like this, play position uh, on shots in such a way that every shot he shoots is a 100% make possibility with a 100% position ratio. Now, now, I, now I'm down to this many balls. I do want to get rid of that two and four. And I would always prefer to be on this side of the uh, a ball like the four ball rather than the other. This is this is easy here. All I got to do is make this. Right. And the twelve or ten, I'm not sure what it is. It's probably your key ball. Well. Or do you want to use the side pocket? I'm sure. planning to play the twelve, nine, eight, ten. Okay. But again, so the ten. I it, can, the ten is what I meant. Uh, I couldn't tell what it was. Ten or the twelve. The ten will be your key ball. Right. Because there you hardly have to move your cue ball. It's just stop, end. stop, stop, right. really. And, of course, that's what you really would like to have. Sure. Too many people think that the, the ideal key key shot is the uh, is the side side shot. I couldn't key disagree with that more. Right. I, I agree with you. You can't do much better than a ball that's sitting where that was. Right, right. And I believe that you can get a little more out of line on a ball, a key ball like I just had, than you can a side pocket one. You can get out of line on that? No, I mean, you can get out of line on the side pocket That's one right. easier. I, I stated agree. it wrong. Right. I mean, there, you can kill it if you get a little too much angle. If you get a little too straight, you can force it. There you go, 80 to 4. Right now, I, I recall, please run another 70. Save me the uh, embarrassment <laughs> no. getting up there. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. Now that is really the way I like to break that's them there break. too. That's that's just ideal. I got very little cue ball movement, and the ball spread nicely. The combination was real easy. Now I can draw this back if I want to, and there's that's perfect oh, because uh, you couldn't ask for them to break any better than that. Yeah. Not a ball in the stack area, and you. Now, I remember being a little worried about this eleven ball that's on the lower side rail. I want to get rid of that. I don't like a ball like that. You mean uh, the 13? Is it the 13? 13 ball. Okay. Well, I only went down to the end rail there because it was it was natural to draw that or punch it out, the cue ball on that shot. Uh, it just wasn't quite comfortable. Now I can nudge these, and I've got a, a nice break ball for a right-handed player anyway. Now I can just follow this out. I fell short, though. I meant to come out uh, farther than that. I do really, in straight pull, I don't like to shoot a shot this hard. It's not all that hard, but I'd rather be closer to it. Right. I recall that shot. I'm saying, well, this is missable. Sure, sure. It's missable. Or a nine ball, I might feel that, well... Now, I've changed my mind here. Just because of the naturalness of it, I decided to use the, uh, I think it's a 10 ball for a break ball. Even though it's on the other side of the table, i got no problem with getting on it. Mm -hmm. And it's a high break shot. I have a lot of success with the high break shot. Oh, I like it too. Cue ball hits the uh, the two front balls. It seems you you never scratch. That f force follow holds it. Uh, sure from scratching in the sides, and you don't scratch in the corner. So it's a a really nice break shot. This is going to put you 94 to 4 with an 84 bull run. 
and I'm going to miss this break shot, and I don't know how I miss it. I overcut it, but it's, uh, I had an ideal angle. I mean, this is perfect. I couldn't get a better angle than that. Were you stretching? Yeah, I did stretch a little bit. Well, see, I didn't get the angle I wanted on the five. I had to cut the one, uh, the five a little bit to my left. Right. I would rather be a, oh, six or eight inches farther up the table than what I am here. How long is your cue? 58 inches. That's pretty standard, right? Yeah. But I shouldn't have missed this break shot. I mean, this is not a hard shot. See, I'm using a little inside on it. Yes. And I overcut oh. it. Now I'm worried about you here. I don't know why I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about you here. I know how dangerous you are. I remember the 137 and out you ran against Steve Miserak. Well, I haven't been playing much uh, in the last few years, so this is uh, strange for me to even play. Well, why don't you tell everybody what's going through your mind? You're quite, you're quite a few points down. All right, right now it looks impossible. I feel like I'm safe. I don't have a shot. You feel like you're safe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I try and recognize the problems, uh, essentially pockets that balls can only go into, and try and get rid of those right away. There doesn't seem to be too much of that. The 11 and 10 or 12 on the bottom left is, uh, is something I'm concerned about. Let's mention to, to our viewers the fact that trouble balls or problem areas, you want to get to them as quickly as possible. You do not want to leave them till late in the rack. Exactly. After I break the balls, what I look for are problem, problem areas, either clusters that have to be broken up or balls that can only be made in one or two pockets and try and resolve those problems right away. Right now, I'm happy with just pocket and balls, although I do have a plan. I may be even if I get out of line, I know that I have some shots to survive it. But I'm still worried about that 11 ball in the uh, bottom left. I don't recall what I did to resolve it. Oh, I think I know what I did. With inside English, on the 6 ball, I bumped the 10. Uh, this is missable for a lot of guys. You use inside English real well. Now, I like the angle you got here because the nine's easy to get on. Yeah, I figured that that was my only problem, and uh, the 3.8, which uh, it's, a, it's a problem in the sense that the 8 can only be made in one pocket. I have balls to get there with, so. That's a nice and shot. Another inside, Very nice and I shot. just, I got where I wanted to, but maybe a little closer than I wanted to. But inside English, for me, it seems that I can slow the ball down or speed it up better than uh, What's your plan here? The outside. 8, 11? Uh, is that the 12 on the right rail? 8, 11, Well, probably, 12, uh, probably the 8 and the 11 and then the ball on the side rail. Right. As I say, 8, 11, the ball on the side rail and then the 5. Right. And what happened was I, I wanted to have a little angle so I can use inside English and go two rails. And what happened was I got two straight. So I, I think I drew right in between the... Drew, uh, this was a nice five. shot. I remember this shot. Yeah, I had the field goal here. Because you got a real nice angle on this 12 ball. And I really don't feel comfortable yet until I have my own break shot. And broke well. them up and then... Uh, this is like bad here, Pat. Rack. This this is ideal, really. You can get anywhere, kind of out in the middle of the table, and be just right. I think I got a little more angle than I, I wanted to be straight, and I think I had a little angle, yeah. But I try and just put a little English on it and hold it. Now, provided you can reach this. I think you've got a little better reach than I do. Well, I may have a little better reach, but I have a shorter cue. The cue is only 53 inches. You're kidding. You play with a 53-inch right. cue? Right, yeah. Have you taken 
leave of your senses, or is there some physical <laughs> principle here I'm not acquainted with? Well, actually, I've experimented all my life with different length cues and up to 63, you know, but in the past 10 years, it's been pretty much standard 57, 58, and uh, a year or so ago, I started going down inch by inch, and um, and 53 is where I am right now, and I couldn't reach this even with a long cue or a regular cue, so there I go again. I missed that same pocket. 94.18. And, well, uh, you overcut it just like, like yeah. I did. What kind of cue is that? That's a, a modified Muchi. You'll notice the butt is short. The butt is, is four inches short, and the shaft is one inch short. Did you have them make that for you specially? No, no, it's off the rack, and I experiment with so many cues, I'd have to do it with off-the-rack cues. Well, after doing this player review today, I've come to the conclusion, or as we're doing it, that you've been spending too much time with Guido Orlandi, <laughs> who, uh, for those of you who don't know him, he's probably, he brings about 10 cues to a match with Indeed. him, but I, now he's got Pat playing with a 53-inch cue. I never heard of that. An inch or two, uh, the guy's experimenting no, we won't around. Gi we won't give him credit for the uh, the short cue, but he, he has long cues. He's got an M80. An 80? An 80. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 80 inches. 80 inch cue. But uh, I've got, uh, actually, my break cue in nine balls, 51 inches. So, but most of that is an experimental stage. But the 53 and 54 inch cue for, uh, for regular shooting is... Uh, I've been using that for about a year, and uh, I'm I'm happy with it, considering I don't play that much, and uh, and it seems to make the shots easier for me. I got an angle on the seven here, which is pretty good. I can go, I can draw into the balls, and I have the three for protection. I think that's what I ended up doing here. No. Okay, well, I can go into the back of them with the three as protection, and I, I'm not going to want to do this very hard. Right. Right. It took me a long time to learn that just mixing them up two or three inches is plenty. That's right. They're all makeable now. Sure. However, I don't have a good break ball here. Uh, I don't like low break balls. I'll take them if I have to. But I don't like them. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a system of measuring. Uh, I don't mind low break balls as long as I'm sure that I can break up the rack. Well, what is your system of measuring? I'd be interested to learn that. I'll draw a line from the second row, or actually the middle of the last row and the second row in the, of the back. And if it's within that line and I have angle, I know I can get a really nice break shot out of it. Okay. As long as it's... Where the last row and the next row meet, if it's if the center of the ball is on that line or above, it's a a really nice break shot. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I learned something. There's there. another method I use for side uh, for normal break shots. A lot of people pass up break shots because they don't realize they're excellent break shots. And what I do is I draw a line from the bottom of the side pocket plate. I take my cue stick and I lay it on the bottom of the side pocket plate, the silver plate, and aim it towards the highest ball of the 14 ball rack, which is the second row. If the center of the ball is below that, it's an excellent break shot. And it might look high, but it's not. So uh, oftentimes I take a break shot that other players wouldn't consider because they don't realize that it goes. And it's a good break shot, too. Well, that's interesting, too. Yeah. So I wanted to get where I could move this nine out a little bit, and I didn't get there. But anyway, I'm not happy. Mm. With I end up trying to get on the 14 here. I think I'm going to play 2, 9, 14. When I... This could have been better. And the 14, of course, is a little high. And I didn't get there. That was a tough shot. The score is 108 
to 18. Well, I'm going to play this ball, and uh, these tables aren't real tough. On a tough table, I probably wouldn't play this. 108 to 18. There we go. That's J.R. Gay in the picture. He played very well here last year. I oh, think yes. He had a couple of hundred ball runs. He's playing Steve Miserec. All right, and you're going to... Well, this is... I don't want to draw it. It's really just below center right English. And I've got a shot here, I think, on the six on the side. No, I, I end up shooting a three ball here. And I make this ball, and this was a lot harder shot than what it appears like on the monitor. This is a fairly thin cut. And I don't have a full pocket. But you seem out of trouble now. You've got enough balls. Well, what I just did there, that's from one pocket. I, I'm very comfortable with playing position um, for a pocket that doesn't appear to be quite natural. I mean, this is not a hard shot. It wasn't a hard shot to get on the eight, nor was, is it a hard shot to make. But these balls aren't lying all that, all that good here. I don't remember what I did here, but as I view it on the monitor, I would play position for the 13 ball. And that's what I did. Because I could play the 9 or the 13 here. I've got a good angle now. It's, it's, it's ideal. I can use the six and go into the two and the 15. It's kind of a center ball hit. But that wasn't so hot because uh, I've got problems with the 9-15. About all I can do here is, is sense the five. And I want to get out kind of in the middle of the table for the 7 or the 11. But this is not comfortable to, I, I can't go into the 9.15 here, but the 15 goes if I get a good angle anyway. And I think I look at it, uh, but I don't want to shoot it because I might end up hitting a 9 with a cue ball and I might have trouble controlling it. So I think I play the 7 here and plan to go into the four ball. Oh, I remember this devilish rack. Oh, I remember it well. I had a lot of choices here. I didn't really want to play the combination. I mean, not right now, but two or three shots from now. Anyway, I've gotten myself in trouble with those three balls on the side rail. I'm going to play the combination. And for our viewers, we just got back our ambient sound, so now you'll hear the click of the balls. It does add a little something to pocket beard viewing. There are other tables uh, that are being used as we, as Grady and I play, so. You'll hear that, those sounds also. See, I had intended to play the combination and get on the two in such a way to, to where I could get an angle on the 11 to go into those. Now, I make a good shot here. This could have ended up a little better, or it could have ended up worse than it did. But I make a nice shot here. I decide to use high inside English and follow over and hit on the, on the far side of the right-hand side pocket and then come over into the balls. Because I need to do something with these balls right now. That's right. Now, I had some other choices. I could have played 211 and, and then the one into them, but, but I want to get into these as quickly as I can.
Now the problems are worsening. <laughs> don't you hate that when you get into the last part of a rack and you don't have your work done? Well, I'm used to it, Grady. <laughs> Actually, I make a pretty good shot here. This, this didn't turn out very well either. I got to use a high ball with just a touch of right. It looks kind of ideal, but it. Uh... I think I missed this combination. So my plan was to play the combination, and I thought I could get position on the nine ball, and then the one would have to be my break ball, not a ideal. All right, and you've given me an ideal break shot, fortunately, to start off, and the score is 120 to 18, and as I said before, I like my own break shot to start off my run, and I feel quite comfortable after that. I'm worried about the side pocket. Well, that was a smart play there. You could be anywhere past the side and relatively straight in on this ball and be fine. I'd like to have angle. I want that cue ball close to the rail in respect to the uh, object ball. That's and perfect. That's... that's absolutely perfect. You don't want to be too close to the rail. That makes the pocketing of the ball difficult sometimes. All right, the score is uh, 120 to 20. I want to see how many you ran here. I never was sure how many you ran, but, but you started off with 18s, right? Right. So. And you had a run of... Uh, 84, I ran. 84. All right, here's where the short cue, uh, you know, has its downside. But you keep an alternate cue, don't you? Yes, a standard cue. Yeah, I'm talking to you now about missing two balls in that pocket already, so I'm worried about the break shot. Yeah, but you're not going to miss this one. This is vintage Pat Fleming. Yeah, I hit it pretty hard, but... Uh, you didn't really catch the ball solidly. Yeah. And... Oh, look at this. <laughs> No, I don't remember either. I don't think I played the six. I'll have to look at the rack again and... Well, it sure doesn't look like you have a shot here. Maybe the one ball. Well, you can't hit the one enough to cut it in, it doesn't look like. Oh yes, it's the one. I go to the bottom rail to the pocket and then to the side to see where the cue ball is going. I'm shooting the one. Oh, I remember this now. I remember. Now you make this, you make a nice shot. Yeah. This is a this tough is, shot. This is like a break shot and that's the way I approach it. I look at it the same way. Well, it really is a break shot. Yeah. Beautiful shot. All right. Immediately, I noticed the three and the four, or the two, I'm not sure what it is, as break shots. And uh, the 13 is, a, is in a spot where I can get rid of the three, clear up some of this other stuff. Now you're going to get rid of this 11 right now, which I thought was absolutely correct. And I uh, hit the 14 first, I think, just so to... Clear them out, and I knocked my brake shot out, but I gave myself another one. Well, the 14 is not laying that bad for a brake shot. The only yeah. problem is that you don't have a real natural key ball to get on right. with. I want to get rid of the nine ball because that can only be made in one pocket. And it frees up the two ball, too. Now, you already made up your mind yeah. to use the 14 here. That's right. And probably the 13, uh, probably the 13 is a key ball, even though I have a ball in the side pocket. 
Well, again, made just we're that agreed on that. I, I, I think you're absolutely correct. However, the ball in the side pocket's not a bad one to get on the 13 with. That's right. Although, I might take the 13 now. No? I'm going to prove, Grady, that you can run balls... Uh, <laughs> run balls the, the opposite way. Well, I would never say that any one way is, is absolutely correct. It's one of the great things about pool, and especially straight pool, All contrasting right. styles. All right, I might use the side pocket uh, break shot. No, I don't. I do use the 13. Okay. Well, this is pretty hard to mess up here. I mean, as far as getting on the 13. All right. Again, I want to angle. See where my, I place my hand? I, mm -hmm. I, I envision where that cue ball has to go to keep good angle on the break shot. So I'll, that's, that's perfect. That's fine. I might have liked maybe an inch more angle, but that's good. That's okay. Well, this has got to be all right here. Again, it's that good high ball break shot. 120 to 34, your favor. And, and both of us are pretty quick players, too. Yes. A lot of fun to play with a yeah. great straight pool player. It doesn't take all day perusing the balls. And right now, the last thing on my mind is the score. I know I'm so far behind that I shouldn't have to worry about the score. Just just get up to the table and start uh, pocketing balls. And that's my only concern right now. There's our insert. Oh, I like that little square up there. Well, I hit them hard again, but they didn't break as well as I wanted to. But uh, Didn't look enough. like the high ball took as much as you wanted it to. It yeah. never did get that second. Well, the reason is I didn't have enough angle. I, I really like a little more angle. That's opposite-handed. Big advantage to be able to do that. All right. Again, I'm looking at balls uh, in the rack that can only be made in one pocket. The one ball, the 13, the 7. All right, I'm not too worried about the, the lay of the balls here because even if I get out of line, I know I have some shots. And usually when I go for position, I'm, I have a couple of insurance balls anyway. Yeah, but your style of straight pool play is very deceptive. Uh, uh, you, you play position a little differently than almost every straight pool player I ever saw. However, it's good high percentage position and good patterns. Now, if I had this, the three I would be my break ball with the two as a key ball, right? Yes, I agree. But a real fine straight pool player, an old timer, told me many, many years ago that if you uh, uh, had your mind hands. made up, excuse me, I didn't mean. Yeah, that's right. He he simply told me that if that if you have your mind made up what the last three balls are going to be, and one of those three is going to be the break ball, that the rest of the rack, you can kind of play it like nine ball. Really. Yeah, as I said before, there's a million different patterns. You have to shoot what's comfortable for you. Every time you're shooting a ball, you you weigh how su the success rate of pocketing the ball in position. and, and But note what Pat is doing here. He has a whole one half of the table in which to get on that ball in the side pocket. Now he can draw or follow this. And I like to follow. There's no way to mess that up. And there I go again. That's where I want to be. And I visualize the cue ball being there and try and just be there. And that's Now that's this is... Good. A better angle than the last break shot. Yeah. These are going to really split open nicely. I think the score is now 120 to 48. And again, I'm not even concerned about the score. I'm just saying just do the best I can and stay at the table. And typically, this is the way I approach break shots. 
is I stand behind the table, then the pocket, then look at the angle that the cue ball takes off the object ball. Yeah, that's important, although you can't always tell where it's going to hit it on the stack exactly. And that's my standard hard hit break shot, and this is the downside of that. Sometimes this will happen, you end up on the end rail. But well, you usually have six shots to shoot at. Well, I don't understand exactly what happened there. How did the cue ball get to the end rail and you used a high ball? Well, I didn't use the high ball on that one. The reason was is when I look at where the cue ball is hitting the rack, if it's hitting the last two balls, uh, and depending on the angle, sometimes I'm worried about scratch, and so I'll pull it back. Okay. I shoot this in the side because uh, side, shots, side pocket shots are much easier for me than shooting any of those balls in the corner. Oh, I agree with you. You have a, oh, a kind of a frontal and wide opening. Right. And of course, uh, there are no two balls together now, but there are balls that only go in certain pockets. So that's my concern now, is uh, keeping shots that are in break shot areas there. Well, the eight, the eight ball combination is on, uh, which makes this rack a little easier. If that weren't on, it would be a tough, tough rack. Right. Now you're moving this ball so that uh, I can see the advantages of this. The six will now go over there. Oops, and I went too far. I remember this. What a nice yes. shot you made here. Oh, I had to uh, opposite handed? No, you end up banking the five across the oh, side. Oh, yeah. Terrific shot. Yeah, I screwed up well here. Well, this is the only shot I have. There's nothing else available for me. Well, you could play it in the corner, but it's that's a hard shot. You know, on the monitor, it looks like the seven can go in the corner, but I don't think it could have, or or it might have been just half a pocket. Something certainly I was worried about, and I was more confident about the five, so I decided to try and bank the five. I remember being surprised at that. I I didn't think you would bank that. I thought that if you were going to play it, you'd just cut it up in the corner. But at any rate, that's a very nice shot. Low outside English. You hit it with authority and confidence. And now you're back uh, looking pretty good again. See, I had angle to go into the ball, so I drew it to the rail to stay out. And, uh, of course, knowing that that combination is dead... And I like and this. Uh, the, you try to move tried the, to one, bump a the one. It's a hair low. And I remember, Pat, uh, being surprised at how you got into these balls here. Or not into them, but uh, I, th I thought you were going to do this differently. I thought you could shoot this ball and... No, okay, this, that's what I meant. And, okay. The 13, I played for the 13. Right. It was a stop position shot. and I remember I decided to go for one of the uh, behind-the-rack break shots. Go out for the 1 and play the 7, I think, is was my plan. And I didn't get the angle I wanted. No, you fell a little, a little short. Yep, and I'm upset with myself. But I think I put inside English on this and come back up. Yes. Yeah, you did that real nicely. That wasn't, that's not an easy execution. And of course, I want angle, which I got. Boy, this is a little more angle than I would have liked. <laughs> you know, when I measure angles on break shots, the decision I make whether I shoot the shot or not is. If it's more than 90 degrees, I don't shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> 90 degrees, of course, being the maximum. And uh, if it's anywhere near 90 degrees, I feel comfortable because I just thin it as much as I can. And I, uh, I In other words, a shot like this is very difficult to overcut. Right, sure. exactly. And if, if this type of shot is missed, it's practically always on the thick side. Right. Scores 62 to uh, 120. Well, see, this is very close to being a 90. I mean, you really have to cut this. Yeah, but I wasn't worried. And on break shots, uh, 
They seem to be easier than other shots. If this shot was in the middle of the rack, I'd be concerned. But break shots, uh... Well, you certainly made it appear easy. Yeah. What's our score, do you have? Yes, it's 120 to 62 at the break shot, just before the break shot. So, uh, I'm gonna run a 44. And uh, my concern is, as I break, every time I break up the balls, I look for clusters and I look for balls that can only go in one pocket. That's number one. And how do I get into the areas where I can break up those clusters and pocket those balls that can only go in one pocket? Well, you're in pretty good shape here. I remember I didn't get the angle I wanted on the nine. Well, uh, but it was enough. It was enough. I could bump into the 13 and and still push everything out without worry of scratching or right, going to the right. bottom rail. This this angle looks pretty good. Yeah, I am worried about it, though. Yeah, that ended up okay. And uh, it's nice when you're worried a little bit and then you get through it and everything is spread out. You have the 210. As a major obstacle here. Indeed. And the eight ball, there's it the eight or uh the the ball to the right of the rack there is not a bad break ball. Right. I believe that's the eight. Well, naturally my concern right now is the uh the two twelve or two ten, whatever it is. I can never tell the difference between twos and twelves and tens and fours. No. In fact I have no. to look at the numbers when I'm playing. And especially a nine ball, I shoot the four ball before the two ball often. But in any event, that is a problem. And uh, I tried to draw into that combination, you know, that problem. Because if I did, I would have broke them up and it would have had plenty of shots, but I miscued. Yeah, I remember you saying this could have been a lot worse. Looks pretty bad from here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it could have been a lot worse. At least you made the ball and yes, you're still at the table. Indeed. Could have been a lot worse. Now you make a really nice shot here. All right, the thirteen is the only shot that I'm considering right now. And it's do I shoot it or don't I shoot it? But there's nothing else that I would consider. And there's just enough room for the thirteen. Just enough room. Tough shot though. Nice medium speed. Nicely done. Okay. So as we, uh, as I go through this rack, I've pocketed four or five balls since. There he's inside English again that I feel most comfortable with. But I'm still worried about those two balls and every shot I shoot is part of the plan of getting rid of those balls and I'm not having much success but I'll see how you do this. I oh think yeah, you I remember. Over here. Yeah, I did. I got good on the uh, the previous ball to have angle on the pocket and the side. So it well, everybody well. plays differently, Pat. Uh, I like the eight here. Uh, one from here, let's see what you end up yeah, doing. Yeah, I do too. And from here, I, uh, maybe 10 one eight. Ten one eight. I don't like the 10 as a key ball here. No. But you might have gotten a little more angle on the 10 than you wanted. I remember I, I had problem with angle throughout this whole run. Uh, but I decided to pocket the 10, go to the side rail and come out so I'd have angle on the one to go two rails for the break shot. That's what I want to be right there. Right, and you had too much angle to get there comfortably. Well, a ball like this one ball, uh, it's an overlooked type of key ball play by a lot of players. It's hard to get so bad on this that you can't get on a break ball Indeed. like the eight ball. Indeed. There's actually four different ways you can get on My it. concern is making the 10 ball, not the position. Once I knew the 10 was in, then I knew I, I had a break shot. Now, I didn't get as much angle as I want, so I had to punch it a little bit, but I'm used to this. You know, all straight pool players are used to this shot anyway. Now, this is almost a, just a above center hit with a little left English. 
perfect. Now that's a that's a good break shot for me. Now what's our score now? The score is one twenty to seventy six. Are you worried, Grady? Oh, sure I'm worried. <laughs> when I play a great player and he's at the table and I'm sitting down, I am worried. Naturally, I'm concerned right. that I might not get back to the table. I step to the back of the table and I imagine the ball going and where the cue ball hits the rack, I go to the pocket. Imagine again, I go to the side, watch where the cue ball hits the rack. And then I go and watch where the cue ball is going in the pocket and sort of feeding my computer with all the data that it needs and then with confidence I hit the ball. I really don't aim anymore. Now I like that. See how that came yeah. again with the high ball? Right. Absolutely perfect. Yet the, you don't get that much cue ball movement. No chance of scratching. Now here if you have the angle you want to get on the 912. Right. I forget if I had the angle, which I did. Yeah, that's ideal. Right. And uh, sometimes I wish I had a ball or two to uh, have a problem to give me a pattern to work with. When they're spread out too far, it's uh, sometimes decisions are harder. That's a great point. <laughs> sometimes you can get into trouble with the easiest of racks. That's right. If there's a problem ball or a little cluster, now you work around it. You pocket three or four balls to get in position. And when you break up that problem, you're down to seven or eight balls, and everything seemed perfect. When you have 14 balls spread all over the place, it's like, I don't know what to shoot. There's hardly a pattern except for making sure you have a break shot and a key ball. But I like what you did there to five is now your best break shot, in my right. opinion. And that ball in the side right. pocket, by the, by the left-hand side pocket, is a pretty respectable yeah. key ball. And I remember, on my mind, I'm saying these balls are so spread so much, I, I hardly know what to shoot next. Well, you changed cues because the extra five inches is going to right. help you. And this is a 58-inch cue. Had somebody say to me, uh, well, you have an extra long cue for long shots. I said, no, I've got an extra short cue <laughs> for shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I feel, uh, well, any straight pool player would feel comfortable with this rack. Yeah, there's no, no particular problem. In fact, every shot you shoot you've got three or four shots. I don't think uh, there's gonna be an instance here where I only have one shot after pocketing a ball. It, it no, can't you're, happen. You're in pretty good shape here. And I think you shoot this ball on the side and go down to the end rail yeah. here, don't you? Probably with inside English. Yeah, now that, I like that because if you get rid of the ball on the rail there, uh, then the rack is really easy. And sometimes... Oh, you didn't mean to come that far. Right. That English sometimes takes too much. No, it doesn't take too much. It takes exactly what it's supposed to, but sometimes uh, it's harder to control. Now, you could play the... Uh, well, I think the, the, the ball near the side, either the two or the four, I think it's the four, is my key ball, and the seven is the ball before the key ball. Right, right. Yeah, that's it. And so this looks uh, pretty textbook right here. Yeah. To play good straight pool, you need to have a good game plan, though, and, and especially at this juncture of Iraq, you should pretty well know what your pattern is going to be. I was worried about drawing into the side. I want to draw on the up, on the high side of this uh, ball I'm playing position for, but it was... Well, this is perfect because yeah. you don't want to be on the straight in on that ball anyway. Right. You want a little light. Now, this next one, straight in is fine. Yes. That's what you'd like. Indeed. Are you... In fact, I wanted a little angle, which I had ended up getting to make the uh, four ball even a straighter, straighter shot. Mm -hmm. No worries, the cue ball's gonna just go to bump. the right There you slightly. go, that's perfect. And it gives me the the angle I like. Here's, here's where I want it, I want it right there. And now I imagine that as I'm shooting, uh, it's like my position point. See, there we go. Perfect, and our score is now what? 120 to 90. 
And you're running 72 balls? Yes. Well, now I'm re I am worried because uh, you need less than what you've already ran, right? That's right. And right about now, when I'm at 90, I feel like I have a chance uh, to win the match. Oh, Where sure. Where before that, it was, uh, well, just, you know, pocket balls, do your best, make a good showing. But now, uh, you know, I sense I'm, I'm close enough to, to make it a game. I've got angle. I'm certainly going to use high English. Oh, I love the high English effect in straight pool. And I have to use my regular length cue, 58 inches. Imagining the ball going into the pocket is a great thing. I wish that imagination would help me with marriage, but thus far it has eluded me. All right, now that I'm time you more or less went right through a four or five ball cluster there. That's that's wonderful. And as usual, after the after the break shot, I look at clusters and balls that can only go in one pocket. So, and immediately trying to resolve those problems. And as you resolve the problems, you're clearing the table of balls. Now this, I think, is your third successful left-handed execution. I can't uh -huh. find the words to accurately describe the benefits of being able to play opposite-handed. I think you might go up for the two-ball here if it goes. Yeah, that's the plan. I might bump the 15 to loosen those up. Yes. And uh, this... This ball and five or six balls. Well, I didn't. I guess I didn't have the angle. Well, I think the 15 goes in the other All right, pocket. 15 anyway. probably goes then. But even at the beginning of the rack, I knew that that ball would go in that pocket and I'd have to find a way to get there. But you've got to do it early. If you wait till the end, you might not. Right. You might right. not get there. Well, I've seen a lot of big runs by some great players where it seemed like every rack, they never had anything determined till the end of the rack, and I just think that's the wrong way to play myself. Yeah, well, I can't agree with you more. Now, this All is right, perfect 15 because didn't go. Okay, you can so. do some nudging if you want to here, right? Right. In fact, uh, I might make the one the break shot. I don't right, forget. Right, sure. I'm of course, the 13 is my next shot if I uh, if I uh, wish to do so. Well, you want to get rid of that anyway. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Absolutely perfect. Now, if I was straight in on a ball going up table, I would take that now, but I'm not. It'd just be one less ball, and I'd be in the same position. Mm -hmm. I don't think you wanted to be straight in on that ball. You wanted a little angle, but you got straight in, so you're going to have to draw this back. Oh, yes. And I felt more comfortable drawing back. Don't further. you draw all the way back for the six here? Yeah, don't you? right. Uh, what I actually did was I said, let me draw at least for the 11. Mm -hmm. If I draw too far, I have the six. But if I don't draw enough, I'm in trouble. Right. So I said, let me draw at least for the 11. I drew, overdrew, but I knew the 6 was there. So. Sure. Well, plus you also had the 8 in the side if you un yeah. underdrew there was a lot slightly. Of, I wasn't in trouble. The only trouble I was concerned about was miscuing. Now, I look what he did here. This is critical. He took the safest position route available to him rather than try to follow that out of right. their two rails. Or I could have followed it out, but I'd have no plan. It'd be a random uh, position because I would have had to really... I no, now, okay, notice, Pat, well. you're not happy with this angle. This isn't the best angle in the world. It's not ideal. I'm not really worried about it, but it's not ideal. Well, you're going to play the 1 next would be my guess, because I think the 8-10 don't pass the 11, and you've changed your mind, and you're going to use the 11 for a break ball. That would be my guess. Yes, and I use inside English to hold up on this and shoot these balls up up upstream or in the side. You have to be willing to change your game plan too there sometimes. Yeah. Now this looks ideal. You're going to play the 10 in the corner and the 8 in the side. Right. It's I amazing. think you look at this, but that was the only reasonable choice. Right. And I took... Uh, I was concerned because I was really worried about pocketing the 12. On the monitor, being a viewer, it looks like a hanger. Like, how could anybody be concerned? But when you're up there, 
Well, this was a little more angled than what it appears like yeah. on the screen. Right. It was. It was. It wasn't that easy. But there's no safe route from the eight to the twelve. I mean, that's right. you, you can't do that. Right. I had to shoot the twelve. And being a great straight pool player, I knew you were not going to overlook that. Here you want to yeah. put all your effort into pocketing That's the twelve. That's all. Just pocket the ball. See, it was much. It wasn't more of an angle than it looked like on the monitor. And uh, okay, I'm going to go to the side rail and out again. I think because I have angle. Well, I like that because you can go as far up the table right. as you want to. You don't have to worry about reaching. Yeah, I'm going to just put high English on it and come out again. I can reach the ball. You just want to be middle of the table That's or something perfect. like that. Now, on shots that are close to the rack and high, I don't like I don't like uh, too much angle. So that's this is really where I want to be. Well, I'd be interested to hear your view on this. When a ball is as you afford described it, I kind of like a just below center ball hit. I don't really want to draw this. Just exactly. enough draw to not go forward. What you want to do is draw, hit the rack, pretty solidly, pretty hard, and just either pull the cue ball back or just away from the rack. Right. But you can hit this as hard as you want yeah. to, just but, as long as you don't go forward. Right. But, you know, when you get down on a break shot, your plan before the break shot might change, at least with me. I might at the last two or three strokes decide to hit it hard and draw it all the way back. But that's, that's typical. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's a standard uh, safest route. But I remember here, this is a tough shot. You this look at this a couple of times. You don't like shooting a 12. It's 120 to 104 now. And you're on an eight, you're running 86. Yes. And uh, as usual, I'm concerned about the clusters and balls that only go in one pocket. Well, you have to worry about making the first shot here. Mm. I have the ball that's on the low end of the rack. Well, I remember looking at this from my chair and hoping that you didn't shoot the 12 and come out two rails because I thought that looked like your highest percentage play. This is the 12? Right. 12 at the bottom. Yeah, I did shoot the 12. But I remember what happened, too. I wanted to come two rails out for the 7 or this other ball near the left corner pocket, but look what happens. Yeah, you almost scratched here. I remember that. I was surprised that uh, that you did that. I was as surprised as you. Well, you make a really nice shot here. Why don't you tell everybody what you're going to shoot here? Well, I know I have to shoot. It's a the the ball near the left corner is makeable. Uh, there's no use taking any back scratches because you're going to shoot it. It's a makeable shot. Uh, you just have to cut it as much as possible. It, it just cinched the ball. You know. Don't you, you play to try to overcut these kind of shots slightly? Well, I try and hit as much of the ball as possible because I know I can't overcut it. Right. Yeah. I am going to cut it as much as possible. I know I cannot overcut this ball. And I don't, you, you don't, you shouldn't have any scratch problem here either. You're going to go into balls. The balls. And I felt quite fortunate to have a shot after being in trouble like that. Now, uh, as I look at the mind, I forget what I did, but I assume I go down play position for the one to break up the pack, which I do, and I get the angle. Too much angle. Too much angle. But it's not 90 degrees, so I'll shoot it. <laughs> you can't. You're not going to cut this one on the I corner. I think so. If you play this one, and I just don't know anything about pool, that's too much angle. Now what I do is I might take my cue stick and draw a line from the one ball to the pocket. And if it's within 90 degrees, I'll try it. There I am. Boy. Yeah. Now that's, you know what, what's perfect here. I like the 2 and 13, is that what they oh, are? Oh, yeah. That's perfect because all you got to do is get straight in or near straight in. On that right. key ball, and it's on the proper side of the table. All right. Uh, boy, I don't see any problems at all. We've got the two balls that are close to each other near the 
the head spot, but or the uh, foot spot. But well, I like what you did right. here. You're, you're going to get rid of the ball on the rail. Right. That's also, you know, a problem ball. Uh, it's not as much of a problem as some of the other things we talked about. But getting rid of those balls, especially if they're high near the third diamond on well, look, the rail. Look what really Fleming did right. here. He's going to draw into the 214. Just yeah. mix them up a little bit. Yeah. That's absolutely perfect. I won't shoot over the ball. I'll shoot that two in the center. Right. That's a great point, especially if you're playing in the world tournament where they play all fouls. Oh, right? yes. Yeah. I don't know about you, Pat, but when I'm, when I'm out playing like this, I'm going to play just like it was a world tournament, and I haven't fouled the ball or even touched the ball this whole tournament. Bad habit to get into. Mm. I did touch one, and I thought it was a foul, and I went to my opponent and said I touched the four ball or whatever it was, and he said it's not a foul in this tournament. So, Yeah, I didn't... Uh, <coughs> I remember didn't hit the ball as well as I remember this. You didn't get where you wanted to, no. and you have to make a good shot on that three ball. What yeah. happened here? You're on the rail, and you cut this a little thinner than you want, and you go farther oh, down the table. Oh, yes. Right? Now, now here, you, make, you end up making a nice shot here, and again, you pick the highest. You look at it a couple times, but you don't want to play this in the corner. Right. I can't, I'm afraid if I shoot the my key ball... I'm not going to have a good shot at the other ball and have position, so right, right. I'm going to shoot this in the side and go up and down. Well, you don't play to go all the way up and down. I oh, think. yes. Huh? Up and down, no? I no, you're just going to come up around the area of the side pocket here oh, with a little I thought I went up and down. Well, maybe you did, but I don't think you went that far. Okay, we'll see. But you shot it. <laughs> you probably are right. Anyway, this takes nerves of steel because, um, you know, you, you have to kind of finesse this ball into the pocket. You can't shoot it too hard. You might even go into those balls or something. Or you could scratch. Yeah, back and forth. There yeah, we go. you were right. Well, you shot it. I, I tell you what you did. All right, I would have liked it uh, a little closer to the rail, but I think I can hold it for a, an acceptable break shot. Sure, low left English. Yeah. Well, I kind of like a drag break shot. shot here. Yeah. I like break shots that are three or four inches off the rail, and that's pretty good from where yeah. you were. All right, we're at uh, 118 to 120. And I'm really worried about you running out now. That's my 100 ball run right there. Yes, it is. And uh, my downfall, maybe, is knowing that I've caught up to you. <laughs> I shouldn't have looked at the score. All right, I feel comfortable about making the ball and hitting the stack and, and getting enough balls out to continue. Well, this is not the easiest break shot in the world. I like using a high ball on this one. Yeah, I when think I, I use... Uh, just center ball. Well, Mike Zuglin uses a center ball on this type break shot, and he always gets great results, and you do too, but I, I, I have trouble with that center ball shot here. Well, I remember what I did here, Grady. I had the uh, 10 or 12. I don't know what it is, but I am worried about scratching. Well, look at this shot, Pat. When you're going to break these balls up with the five, you've got three balls that you can scratch off of or any combination of two of them. And I was aware of it, and the plan was, I know there's a possibility of scratching, let me go through them, hit it harder and get that force follow. It didn't work. But we're going to change tape, Grady, and uh, we'll be back in uh, just a few seconds, so we're going to go to black. We'll be right back. I know if I don't get out here, Pat, that I'm going to lose this, so I shot the combination because I can make it a hundred times in a row. Now I'm just going to draw into these balls, and what do I need? I need about 30, right? All right, you need to, well, you needed 30 at the beginning of the run, so you need 28 more. All right, here I've got plenty of protection, I, as long as I don't let the cue ball get down on the end rail. And as it ended up, I didn't have as much protection as I thought because I kind of caught the ball as a glancing blow. And I have to play this two ball on the side, and I'm looking at playing position for the 15 and the 1. What I want to do here is just come up in the middle of the table look like my best play and that way I can hit the two ball 
using no English. And this is a thinner cut than it looks like. It, it wasn't the easiest shot in the world. I'm happy with that. That's that's more or less what I wanted to do. But this is a little touchy here too. Uh, I I decided to shoot this and try to go into the 14 ball at easy. Now, uh, I decided to play the six ball here and go three rails. This is natural, just a little right English. I'd like to get on the 13 ball. But of course, I've got the three there on the end rail. So I'm going to have a shot. Oh, you ended up just right. All right, that's exactly what I was hoping <laughs> to do, is get on the 13. And I know that uh, that I, I thought I could get out. Uh, uh, no, I need to. Uh, I need two break shots to get out. But now I'm in pretty good shape. I, I have the 15 for a break ball, and I want to get rid of this ball on the rail. Now here I want to play position on a three ball, and all I have to do is not get straight in on it. I want to get rid of this five because that's in a little bit of a problem area given the lie of this particular pattern. Now here all I have to do is go around the 15 and I'm in great shape. Right. Now I ended up uh, making this a lot harder than I had to. I caught rail first on a three instead of ball first. Now I don't want to play the nine because that's my key ball. I can't roll the 14 in. And my plan here is to punch this over and hit before the side and bounce back out in the middle of the table. And the thickness of the hit um, made it a little tougher and, uh, and I ended up with not as good an angle and much closer to the rail than what I wanted. And so I'm gonna have to lag this seven ball in, which I consider to be a very tough shot. Oh, indeed it is. I don't have an angle where I can hit this with any speed. Sure, I always I thought there was a possibility I might get up to the table again from that shot, but I made a good shot, but it's fine. not an easy shot. Now again, I've gotten uh, just an ideal angle here. I think I go to the rail here, which is the way I like to play that. And it's perfect position. All right, score now, Grady, is uh, one thirty three to one eighteen. Now I know I only need one more break shot. Well, I don't know about you, uh, Pat. This is an ideal, uh, just a perfect angle for me. If you had asked me to set up my favorite break shot, this would be it. He has 120. It's really 130, but 133. I forgot to add those 13 balls. But go ahead, Grady. I'm sorry. Well, this is my perfect break shot. If you asked me to set up my favorite, this would be it. But I can hit it as hard as I want to with just a good natural high ball. Oh, what a great shot. Well, there's nothing hard about it. All I had to do was make the ball. Yeah. But there's no, no two balls frozen together. I'm in right. terrific shape here. Now I'm going to play the six here. And again, there's, there's no special problem. I could even nudge the seven up here if I wanted to, which is what I think I end up doing. Although it's not lying perfect. Uh, right. You might make a problem. The seven and the... No, okay. I might be worried about if well if you nudge it just slightly, but if you have to hit it more than uh, more than I would want to, then you might be worried about getting tying it up. So you're not shooting it anyway. You're shooting the five. Well, the five is, is better because then if I decide to nudge the seven, I've got the fourteen for protection, and I hit it a little too easy. I play this off the three ball because this is hard to miss. Now this is this is perfect. If I can get position on the three ball, I've uh, got those two balls there. I got the key ball to get on the seven with. I love having a key ball on the break ball this early in the rack, where all I, all I really have to do is get through these balls. 
Right. And to make matters worse, now I've even knocked the, uh, the 12 out there. But I remember uh, not liking the fact that if I shoot the 9 here, I have to hit the 1 uh, where I could go into those balls. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't really play very good position. I, I could have done better. But I think I have to end up cinching this 9 and just take what I, what I get there. but I can't keep the one from going into these balls. Well, there's a problem that has to be well, dealt I, with. I have really messed this rack up. <laughs> the balls were spread before. <laughs> but we've all done it. We've all done it. Well, I found a way to make it tough. I mean, there was no problem with that rack. Now here, uh, I, 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 again, uh, I make the balls worse here, and I didn't have to do this because the three would go. And my other thought, and I thought about it a couple times too, I've been thinking about it as I shoot these other shots, I could get on the three and use left English and break up the balls with the one. But I, I decided to go into them here, and I make it worse. <laughs> on top of that, I almost scratched. I'm scratching my head. I'm not happy with the way I've done this. I... The score right now is 141 to 18, Grady. And I have to uh, play the two ball, which is missable. All right, I'll change that to 140. I don't think I saw that two ball. Yes, I did. And I made a good shot there, but I didn't get the angle that I wanted. I have to force this to uh, to get into these balls. Oh, I remember this. Now I can't shoot from here. Oh, this, what a what an interesting end this is going to be. Now I can't shoot here because uh, I can't make the three. I can't make the seven. I mean, I could make the three, but. I can't go anywhere, so so I'm going to play safe here, and I'm going to put the cue ball, uh, and I don't quite get them frozen. I make a good shot. As I approached the table, I thought the cue ball was frozen, and then as I inspected the one ball, I noticed the cue ball wasn't frozen. Well, you're going to end up beating me to the shot here, a very unique uh, offensive opportunity. Because I remember thinking to myself that, that I had made a great safety. At any rate, you're going to play safe here, too. You're going to look at this a minute. And... Anyway, look how the, the 110 are lying here, Pat. Um, and playing safe from this position two or three times uh, between us, the thought of you being able to do something with the one just flat doesn't occur to me. All right, you've played safe. Now, we might mention, and this is a noteworthy fact, you're only allowed in straight pool to play safe to the same rail twice in a row. That's right. And what happens if you do it three times in a row? It's as if you scratch three times in a row. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so you're going to play a, a good safety here. Well, Keep this ball. is my second one. Right. Well, I thought it was a good safety. Again, uh, the thought of you being able to do something with the one has not even occurred to me. All right, now I'm look I'm frozen on the rail. That one ball is frozen. And uh, we're discussing the two you know, the, the options we have with two fouls and scratches and everything. And actually what the rule is, is that if you approach the table with two fouls and you're hitting a ball that's within a ball's width of the rail, you must approach that shot as if you hit that rail twice already. And that happened at the U.S. Open uh, 
a couple of years ago. Dallas West had two fouls on him. He was behind the rack and he was going to play safety on a ball that was within a ball's width of the rail. And the rule was he had to make that go to another rail. Mm -hmm. And so we're discussing that now. Well, my point it's a moot was, point because I'm going to play the ball anyway. Right, but my point was that I could have taken a scratch and uh, up at the other end of the table or something. No, that's here. what I'm saying. If I, if I played a safety now, you would have uh, had to approach the table as if you were on two fouls. So if you took a foul, it would be three But it's not rail. a foul to play safe to a rail. Well, I know it's not, but I'm just saying that that is... The rule. Everybody look in your rule book. Look in your straight pull rule book. Well, well I wonder is. what mental giant <laughs> created that rule. It was to prevent guys from taking two safety fouls and then pushing safety, you know, for a scratch. But in any event, I try this. I probably hit it a little and easier than I wanted, but not much easier than I wanted. Well, it rolled out on you a little there. Yeah. The reason I didn't hit it harder was I was afraid that it would immediately leave the rail if I hit it hard. Mm -hmm. might jump up because the cue ball was very close to it. And if the one ball jumped slightly, it would have jumped out. So I hit it as easy as I thought I could have. It did roll off, but that's the risk you take on that shot. Sure. Well, I remember not liking this. Um, obviously, if I can get on the 10 ball, I can use a 7 for a break. So I'm going to play this combination, but I wanted to go rail first. And I end up a little straighter in here than what I want to be. But I'm all right here because I can follow this out two rails. This is going to put you at 147 at the end of this rack, and you'll need uh, three balls. And I'm still at 118. All right, anyway, I use inside English here, and I get a little more on it than I wanted. I stay down and follow through, but, but I, I get an awkward angle. Right. <clears throat> now, from here, uh, I've got three choices I can try to go over to the side rail and back over, but that's hard to judge, plus it makes the ball more missable, or I can draw the ball past the side pocket, three rails, I don't want to do that, and I decide to that it's laying pretty good to just roll forward and catch the seven at the right angle. And that was a great shot. Great shot. Well, it wasn't that the shot was so great, I was proud of myself for recognizing that I could do that. I mean, once I realized that I could do that, the shot wasn't that hard. Well, that made it a great shot. But anyway, <laughs> now I know that all I have to do is make the break shot, and I, I should win this match. Which, of course, would delight me after I was so concerned about you running out on me. 147, 118. As Steve Miserak watches on and all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great straight pool player he's been over the years. He ran 153 his first match of this tournament. We didn't. We don't have it on video, of course. All right, you need two, Grady, and uh, I've resigned to the fact that uh, I'm a loser. Once well, I'm again. gonna get two more here. There's no. All right, and uh, as always, it's a pleasure playing you. Uh, win or lose, and working with you also. Well, it wasn't the greatest played match in the world between us, but it was respectable straight pool. You ran 101, I ran 84, and from a learning perspective, it's certainly worthwhile. All right. Thank you, Grady. Thank you.